Hi friends, uh, this is Kimberly with Starfish Design. Pardon me, I'm not on tripod right now. I forgot to do the intro for the new bag. This is the Anadu. This is the one we'll be stitching in this demonstration and it is very big. I had to try my new largest hoop from my Janome 550E. What's special about Xanadu is she's a flat bottom bag. But unlike the flat bottom girl where you get the triangle gusset on the side, this case, it's kind of like inverted into it. So it creates the, the pleated bottom, the gusset on the bottom, um, but in a different manner. So let me show you on the smaller bag. This is done in Interface Cotton with um, Sofuse Plus. And then this bag is vinyl and ignore my disarray in the background. So this one here is vinyl. This is from Indo Love Creations. And this was a little bit more difficult because this kind of vinyl is kind of unwieldy. It will, it will crease with a lot of pressure, but it doesn't crease very well. So you can see on the bottom, even though I, I weighted this down, it's still kind of... Um, um, I don't know what the right word is to say. It's, it doesn't stay as flat, I guess is the easiest way to say it. But it's still kind of a, a, a nice size bag. Um, and then inside, you see, because you have the gusset there, it's thicker at the bottom. So you have more room to put stuff in. And this size is the... Uh, I don't remember. Uh, this might be the 8 by 6 It's not the 5 by 7 I don't think. Maybe it is. I actually think it might be the 5 by 7 or 7 by 5 I usually always label my files with the width by height. So if I let's label a 7 by 5 it's 7 inches wide by 5 inches high for your hoop. If it's a vertical bag, then I would label it as 5 by 7 So anyway, this is Sienna Dew. And I would say this is a, uh, I, won't, I don't want to necessarily say it's an intermediate bag. It's actually very simple, but the last couple of steps are more difficult because of that pleat on the bottom. So if you're familiar with the flat bottom girls, you see, we know I digitize the pleat so it gets sewn down. <clears throat> um, with this, the pleat is off the end of the bag and then you fold it up so it doesn't really get digitized. So what happens is the presser foot will be coming down here and it's gonna hit, potentially hit the pleat. So the workaround to that, of course, is to use, I float some tearaway on top. And so the tearaway helps prevent it from hitting the pleat. So for sure you would need a 9014 if you're doing vinyl, maybe even a 116 needle on your embroidery machine. I think you, all who have the multi-needle machines will have no problem, but the single needle machines don't overtax your machine. You are responsible for knowing how much your machine can do. This is the 550E Genomi that I did this on with this vinyl. I would call this a mid-weight vinyl. It has the fuzzy, almost flannel-like backing. It's kind of thicker. I would not go any thicker than this. So the regular traditional marine vinyls like from uh, my punk embroidery, that would be way too thick. Um, what else? Starfish, or I'm sorry, Stardust, uh, the Simply Line from my punk embroidery. Those are my favorites for in the hoop bags because they are thinner. Stardust, you have to be careful because it has some stretch to it. But um, the Simply Line is, is really good. Um, so I really like those lines for the in the hoop bags. Again, you know the limits of your machine. If your machine can plow through heavy denim and things like that, then you have a little bit more comfort. So I recommend that you start with a cotton and see how it reacts. And then you can move up to a vinyl if you want to use vinyl. But there's absolutely no reason not to use interface cotton. Um, I just know a lot of my um, fans are big into the vinyls as well as I am. So this one I used, um, I don't remember where I got this zipper tape from but it's one of those metallic ones. It's kind of interesting. This one is a little bit thinner, and this one I used a metallic as well, but the ribbon is really thick and heavy. I'm pretty sure I got this from Wizardry <clears throat> because it's in the kind of bags. It was in the kind of bag that they use. So I was really pleased with that. 
But anyway, this is um, Xanadu and should be available. Today is January 8th. Should be available uh, hopefully by next weekend. And it'll have multiple sizes um, as always. And I'm actually throwing in some other sizes that I don't typically do just because of the nature of the bag. Um, people might want more vertical bags than I normally do. Um, but yeah, so I hope you guys like it and stay tuned for the starting. Uh, I always forget to say at the beginning of the <laughs> video, but you're going to hoop your no-show poly mesh stabilizer and run color stop one on your um, stabilizer only and then use a color that um, matches your material. So you can use whatever color thread you want, but just make sure it matches your material. Let's get going, guys. Okay, guys, this is going to be tricky because I'm using the big hoop on the 550E, which is 14 inches tall. So I really had to pull my table out from the wall, and I was having a lot of trouble with it. Um, but let's try and see if we can make this work. Okay, so I've gone ahead and stitched out the general die line and then the placement line for the bag. Um, I'm sorry, the zipper. So the first thing that we want to do before we get started is do some markings. I have this um, later in the pattern, but it, it makes sense to do it now. So I gave you a little tick mark to help you center your fabric. So that's the first thing that you should do is use a ruler and go ahead and extend this tick mark all the way to the exterior of your hoop. So what you want to do is you want to line up your zipper, I'm sorry, your ruler uh, with the placement line so you know that it's even and then go ahead and draw a line there and then also later on in the bag we're going to need to um, know where our zipper or the end of our bag is so go ahead and cross extend these lines out so it's just easier for you later on in the bag um, to line things up so I'm extending both the tops from the width and the height and then also on the bottom on both sides we want to draw a line that is one half inch and one inch and this worked out almost oh I don't have quite an inch that I can draw mine is about 15 16 so when I get to that step in the pattern where I need the one inch I'm just going to line it with my um hoop so I do need the one half inch. This is needed to line up our lining. So we'll mark that on the front and the back. And this is because I am using the full width of this hoop to do my pattern. So I'm going to mark the half inch. And that'll help us um lining up bar lining so this one's just i mean it goes all the way to the end right here is one inch so i'll just know that this is my one inch mark okay let's see what's next we marked everything you can turn to the back and make those same marks in case you can't see them but since i'm using ink i can see mine okay okay now we're going to go ahead and put on our um zipper so this pattern will work with either a number five zipper or a number three zipper. So what I like to do is flip the hoop around so that the right side of the bag is attached to me. Whenever I talk about directions, it's always going to be in reference to the bag because I don't know how you have the pattern lined up in your hoop. So if you're using a number three zipper tape, which is what this um, zipper by the yard is, You'll just line that zipper tape up right between those two outer lines. With both of the zipper tapes, the middle line should line up with the back of your zipper teeth, where the middle part of it. It's harder to see on the white zipper, but you can see it when you're up close. So with both of them. So what you'll do is you'll just go ahead and overlap this by one half inch if you're using zipper by the yard and tape in place. If you're using a pre-made zipper, that has all these metal bits in it, you wanna make sure that that metal bit is extending at least a half an inch beyond your placement. 
This is a number four and a half, I think, zipper or five. So you'll see it's wider than my placement line. So this is where I would need to line up that middle line. But you need to make sure the zipper bits, the metal bits, are outside of the seam line by at least a half an inch. So right here is the metal bit here. Now this is too short of a zipper, but on the top part, we'll do the same thing. So I'm actually gonna use zipper by the yard. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my zipper by the yard. 14, or 16 inches I think is what the pattern says. Um, so you just wanna make sure you have enough to overhang so it doesn't, you don't get your zipper pull in the way. And then, oh, this is nice. I don't know where I got this from. Most of the time when I get this, the glittery kind of zipper tape, the actual tape or ribbon as it's often called is really thin, but this is really thick. It's probably from, based on the bags, it's probably from um, Wizardry Stitchery because they have these skinny bags. Okay, let me find my zipper pull. We are gonna be mixing some metals because I don't have a gunmetal pole for my um, zipper. I'm gonna use gunmetal D-ring strap connectors, but that's okay. So for this, what I do is I separate the zipper and then put at an angle, um, you start at an angle and then you slide it in so it's about, you can just see to the top of that little head. Then hold your zipper pole with your left hand and then you have to might release a little more and bend this one in sort of like at a 45 degree angle and it'll line into there and once you have both of them equal on the same side here and here I lay mine on the flat surface of the bat the table and hold straddle the pole with my two fingers and then I pull and so what I have to do sometimes this is getting in the way is use this finger to push that zipper tape in closer to the side. And usually it works. Um, and sometimes I get a little bubble and that's fine for an in-and-hoop bag because we have extra. But if you're doing a regular bag where you wouldn't want to have that little bubble there. So you'd want to redo the zipper pull until you have it even. This should be even. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and tape this down as soon as I find my tape. I still have not reorganized, finished setting up um, in, I'm gonna be moving my sewing area to another room anyway, which is very good since the hoop is too close to the wall over here. So um, I think I need to get a bigger table. Well, I think it'll fit fine on the table if I have more space in the back, but it's hard for me to get right on top of the hoop now I have to scooch out of the way because my tummy is too big. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and overlap this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find that center mark. I don't know if you can see that, but I can see it up close. You'll be able to see it. It's the void where the zipper teeth fall apart. And I'm going to line that up with that center line. And this is using the number five zipper tape. Then I'm gonna rotate my hoop around and I'm gonna follow that center line, rolling the zipper across the hoop and taping it every couple of inches. And this is really hard because this hoop is so big. I re My arms barely can reach. And I like to try and keep the tape as far to the outside as possible. But if your zipper, if your teeth or needle, can I speak? If your needle goes through it, it's not a big deal. I find that um, it doesn't gum up the needle too much. But if it does, just get some rubbing alcohol and a paper towel or a swab and just wipe the needle. Okay, so now again, I'm just rolling it down so that the center line is lined up with that center placement line and taping it and then I do one side the bottom side of the zipper first and then I'll come back around and put a few pieces of tape on the top side so it doesn't come loose up there and see by it's a little bit wasteful but by keeping this tape long the zipper long you don't have to worry about your um, zipper pole 
falling into the stitch path area. And so then what I do is I put a piece of tape, or tape to hold the zipper pull in place as well so it doesn't come loose. And then we'll just go back around here and put a few pieces of tape there. This will probably be the only time I do this size bag on the video because this is gonna be very complicated. Thankfully, there's not a lot of steps. Uh, and I did forget to mention, always check that the number of steps on your machine, what shows up here on your machine, matches what's in the PDF because some machines are automatically set to color sort. You do not want to color sort on an in the hoop bag. And I have a hooped poly mesh, uh, no show poly mesh, but this bag actually you can use a tearaway if you like because the lining, the tearaway and the, or the stabilizer will be in between the lining and the exterior and you will actually be able to reach in and um, pull it out if you wanted to. Um, but I'm, I don't have any tearaway that's this big, so I'm going to stick with my no-show poly mesh. And I did mention the tape that I'm using is transport tape by 3M. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch the zipper down, and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're all done with that step, which was color step two. Go ahead and release this hoop and remove all the tape. Now, you can reuse this tape many times. I usually get at least three times out of it, three uses out of it. So go ahead and release it all around, except at the zipper pull. Okay, so now what we're going to do is start on the back of the hoop. Mr. Piece. And we're going to lay down our lining panel A. The two lining panels are actually different size. Ooh, be very careful because you don't want your stabilizer to come loose. So I gotta make sure I actually did cut mine on a little bit wonky, so I hope it's gonna work. Um there's a little gouge in this one. So I gotta measure and see which one's the right ones. Okay, so this is the B and this is A. And I hope it's gonna be long enough. I might have to cut a new piece. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and line up the, um, in this case, the long edge. Most of the bags, it's gonna be the long edge with the bottom of the zipper placement line. Now, if you're using a number five zipper and you have trouble seeing that, just line it up with the um, zipper, the bottom of the zipper. And you can go ahead and turn this in half or fold it in half so you can use your placement line. Just make sure it's even. And then we're going to go ahead and tape this down. So we want the wrong side or the pretty side facing the stabilizer. I love Crafty Gemini. I've been watching her since I think literally almost since she started going on social media and she calls it the pretty side, the wrong side. So I always like that. Okay, so I've got this taped down in three spots because this is a long piece of fabric. And then use your hand as you fold, turn the hoop over to hold on to the lining so it doesn't come loose. And now when you come to this side, you see that it's even. Okay, and there's our little... Uh, centering mark so you can kind of extend it here okay so now you have your really long exterior piece so i've gone ahead and fused mine with um so fuse plus and so i want the side here that i left the quarter inch and i'm going to fold this in half using my stabilizer to mark the half because i didn't get it even all the way across but I do want my stabilizer to try and be even. So I marked my little, hey, it's actually a little bit off, just a little off from my original notch. So we're gonna turn this right side together. The top edge of the material is gonna be with the bottom of the zipper and we're gonna line it up 
with that little centering mark and you want the bottom, the raw edge of the piece to be lined up with the zipper. And then just like we did on the exterior, we're gonna go ahead and tape this down in the middle and on both sides. Now remember, this is not the bag to use a um, directional material because this is all one big piece of fabric. So you do not wanna use directional material the back of it is going to be um, the same fabric. So if you use directional material, it'll be backwards, upside down on the back. Okay. So you might have to roll your material up to keep it out of your way. So I'm going to go ahead and run step three, which is going to tack this down, and I'll be right back. Okay, so step three is done. So now we're going to go ahead and turn to the back of the hoop and you want to use a lot of care because this is a big hoop and I kind of jumped on my stitch right there because I made the mistake of pulling it on the front because it was coming up so my stitch jumped but that should be fine need longer arms okay so we're going to go ahead and fold so this is a stitch and flip technique. You stitch it down and then you flip it open. So we're gonna flip this down and we're gonna go ahead and finger press the seam. And then we're gonna tape it down. Now you're gonna see here that mine is gonna interfere with my um, hoop attachment. So what you can do is either roll up the fabric underneath the hoop or in my case, I know I can just go ahead and trim that piece a little bit because I only need it to be at that half inch mark that we marked earlier. So I can go ahead and fold this back like this to create a, a fold line to cut with. And then I'm just gonna trim that off. So I, I always leave extra on the fabric cutting instructions because if you take too big of a seam at the zipper, which I've seen people do, then you won't have enough at the end. So by padding it, usually I pad it about half an inch, then I'm assured that you guys won't mess up your bags. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and tape both corners down because we're not gonna lift the lining up again. Now, if you're gonna add any embroidery to the top of your bag, to the front of it, I should say, then you will end up lifting the lining up. This is gonna be a really big bag. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is my first big bag on the big hoop. I was so excited to find this machine. I got a really great deal on it. And, um, but wow, it's a big bag. Okay. So I'm gonna carefully flip this over now that I have all that lining taped down. Really, careful because this is so large and then go ahead and remove the tape from your front I'm trying so hard not to put the tape on my machine that's what I normally do and then I get all this gummy marks all over my machine I mean it comes off easily with rubbing alcohol but I'm just trying to be good on my new machine okay so I'm gonna go ahead and flip this down and we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna finger press the seam. When you're finger pressing, make sure you have the hoop against something firm, like the bed of your table or take it to your ironing surface. And then we're going to pull it tautly and tape down the sides so that they don't come up while we're top stitching. And sometimes you might have to actually tape to the hoop itself if you run out of space okay if you need to roll this up at the bottom so you can get to your hoop attachment then do so okay so we're going to go ahead and run step four which is our top stitching i'll be right back okay so we're all done with the top stitching and next we're going to run step five which is the placement lines for the d-ring strap connectors I'll go ahead and just do that on the Q 
camera because it only takes a few seconds. So this is looking like it's getting a little bit puffy there. So let me readjust this tape. Okay, so step five. So I give you four D-ring strap connector placements. One on either side, so you can use it like a Rissa strap. Two on the top to use as a crossbody strap. You can do just the two on the top, one on either side, both on either side, or I've seen people do the Rissa strap and the D-ring straps on the top so they can have both options available to them. That's good on the much smaller bags. I didn't tape this down very well, so I can see it's getting poofy in the center. But I would have recommended instead of what I did, if you're using cotton on this large bag, is um, go ahead and use a pin out of the stitch area. But that's okay, we'll make do. In the great scheme of things, should be fine. Okay, might have dropped my D-rings on the floor when I was moving my machine, nope, I didn't. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see them, but I can see cl up close where the threads end. So right here, and then, it's really hard to see in this black tape. Okay. And right here. The reason I'm writing the lines in for you to see is because if you use the D-ring strap connectors on the top here, just so you can make sure that they're even, I want you to place them on the innermost, against the innermost line, like that. If you're using the side ones, you wanna place it at the top of the line. Because the steering strap connectors are a little bit longer because I don't know if you're gonna use a three quarter inch, a half inch, or one inch. So I'm trying to make them a little bit longer, especially on the bigger bags. So what I'm gonna do is I want my um, strap connector to extend a half an inch above the uh, zipper. Usually what I do is I line up the hardware with the top edge of the actual um, main exterior. And that usually gives me, for what I like, the right amount of length on the D-ring strap connector. So one thing that I wanted to show you is what I do for my cotton ones is I d cut it twice the width of my D-ring strap connector, which is three quarters inch. So I cut it a half an inch. I fold it in half and then fold each long edge into the center to mark it. And crease that. Then I put in a piece of so fuse plus so the fuse both side is facing up and then the glue will hold down these raw edges. This makes the strap connector a lot thinner and you don't really see the inside once it's taped down and that reduces the amount of bulk that your machine has to go through. If you're on a uh, multi-needle you don't usually have to worry too much about that because they're so strong they can go through a lot but single needles are not meant to be going through all these layers that we put it through I have to laugh actually I was reading the manual for this and it says not recommended to to go through thickness more than an eighth of an inch which I found humorous considering what we do to these bags but the second reason I found it humorous is this machine is actually advertised to be great for doing uh, what do you call that? Um, side to side quilting. And there's no way a quilt um, sandwich is gonna be thinner than an eighth of an inch. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip the steps for the side connector since I'm not using that one. And there's no sense in wasting thread. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay on the film though because this is gonna be tricky because I have to raise the presser foot in the back um, so it doesn't hit the D-ring. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this, actually. So, 
on my machine, what happens is when the um, presser foot finishes doing the step, it kind of pull to pull the tail, it pulls it all the way around and it can get hit on the D-ring. So I have a way to actually raise it up in the back higher. So what I do is I wait till I hear the thread cutting and then I raise it. It's gonna be hard on this being so far away from me. So I don't wanna hit my hoop. So you hear the thread cutter? Now I raise it up. Okay, I would have been okay that time. It didn't go that way. But there's no rhyme or reason <laughs> as to which direction it pulls that I've ever been able to find out. Okay, again, this was step six. And you see here, it would have hit the D-ring strap connector. And I'm gonna go ahead and finish, skip ahead to step seven and skip those steps. Okay, step seven is gonna seam our winding together, leaving an opening for the turning hole. Okay, I need to move the hoop out of the way. Because I have stuff sitting there. Oh, I took the hoop off. That's okay, I need to move the arm out of the way is what I mean to say. Okay. So we're gonna flip to the back. And I need to check, check real quick and make sure that my lining is gonna be enough. So we're gonna come down here to where we marked our half inch mark. And go ahead and fold this up if, open if you need, just so you can see where that half inch mark is because I didn't trim this really easily. And we're gonna lay our second lining panel Oh, so this is lining panel B, and I just need to test it real quick and make sure that I have enough because I might need to cut this um, a new piece because I think I messed up. So I'm going to tape this down for one second here. So I want it taped at the half inch so that our lining has a half an inch seam allowance. And then the next step, what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold this down to the, let's see, where's it gonna be? Right here. To the one inch mark, which we determined for me, is gonna be the edge of my hoop. You won't have to do this, I'm just, I. Got to make sure I cut mine. All right. And then we need that inch and enough to reach the top. And it's not. See, I don't have enough. Darn, darn, darn. So I'm going to need to cut a new piece of this. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm not going to take the time to press this. And it's a little bit short because there's a notch, but it's fine. So let's go ahead and tape this down. We're gonna trim off this extra when we're all done anyway. And then don't forget to put a piece of tape in the center. Just gonna reuse that one. Okay, so we have it all taped down. Carefully flip it over, holding the lining with your hand. Okay, now you wanna roll your exterior up and out of the way just like that now especially if you're using this big hoop make sure your lining did not come undone on the bottom and we're going to go ahead and run step seven and i'll be right back okay step seven is all done and i just wanted to show you step eight comes here you don't need to run that step the reason i did that is because i've the next step is going to be way up here and if I didn't put in a stopper. The hoop is gonna try and go all the way up there when you have your exterior all folded up and it could get stuck on there. So you don't need to run step eight. That's the only reason it exists. And that is in the, in the PDF as well. 
So what we're going to do now is I'm going to move the hoop out of the way so I can show you. We're going to create our pleat. So if you are familiar with the flat bottom girl method, you know that at this step, what we would be doing is um, doing all the pleating that forms the gusset. So we're going to use a pleat this time too, but instead of having the triangular uh, gusset ends on the outside, it's going to be on the inside the way we do this. So let's move our tape. We can leave that tape there actually in the middle. And you'll see we have a nice generous opening now. So what we're going to do is we're going to fold our lining. This is so hard to do with this big hoop. I should, I won't do this for the videos again. I should use a smaller hoop for the video. Okay, anyway, we're gonna fold it. And again, so it would be one inch from the bottom line. Actually, I think I might've been able to mark it on the back, just not in the front because on the back, that's the hoop frame right there. So it's gonna be right, it's still at the same point. It's right where the hoop ends on this big frame. So I'm gonna fold right here. I drew a, a pen so you can see it a little bit. And what we wanna do is we want this to be even across the hoop. So you're gonna fold the fabric down so that it meets that line that you drew on step one. And don't crease this too much because this is gonna be the actual flat of the bottom of your bag. Okay, and then up here, oh, this is perfect. I'm gonna have just enough, I think, for the, yeah, well, that I couldn't have done that better if I tried. So we're gonna tape the top. Yours will extend a little bit farther over. Cause what we're going, oh, I'm missing a step. Oh, I almost did this again. Anyway, I'm gonna take this so I don't come loose down here. We'll come to this in a minute. So now that we have our one inch marked, we wanna fold this up, hold that, so that you know you can hold your finger against it if you need to, but we want that one inch mark so that it's just under that seam we just ran. So you should have a one inch pleat here. So it's gonna be right underneath that original placement line that we did in the beginning. And then you can fold and press this along the way if you need to. So I'm gonna flip this around. You can still see in the frame. And then all the way across here, I wanna make sure that I still have my one inch marked. So right here's my one inch. I'm gonna fold it up so it's just above that little placement, the seam we just did. And I'm gonna tape this to hold it. And then see how long this space is here? We don't want that to come loose. So go ahead and put a couple of pieces of tape to hold it down. And again, you want it right above the stitch we just did to seam the lining panels together. And it should be evenly one inch all the way across. So you can get your ruler and check. That's really important if you want the pleat to look right when we're all done. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna carefully remove the stabilizer behind our zipper. So what I like to do is use my seam ripper and I get the blade in there. You're gonna go right under that tack down strip and I get it so I can see my blade through the poly mesh and then I just kind of glide it along and it'll glide right along that stitch that you did for the tack down, okay? And then again, we're being very careful here. It's so much so that I would actually just take this over to my cutting table to do this work if that was convenient for me. Okay, then on this side, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put the blade in so we can see it and then we're gonna hold the 
stabilizer with our other hand to give it tension and just glide this seam ripper right across. And it actually will pull out, since you're giving it tension, it'll pull out that stabilizer from the seam. Okay, and I don't have my ducktail scissors here. Usually when I get to the ends, I like to use the ducktail scissors because I have found that it's really easy with the seam ripper to cut into this lining. So I'm just gonna use my regular scissors here to cut the end. That way it can stay on top of the lining. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and finish our lining on the back. We're gonna tape it down. Make sure nothing came loose down here. Make sure everything's still straight there. I think my lining is crooked, that's okay. As long as it reaches the top, that's all I care about. And then we're gonna put a couple pieces in the center so it doesn't fall down while it's stitching. I'm gonna have a really short seam allowance up there, but that's okay. Yours won't be so short. Okay, so now carefully flip this around. Make sure you are back flat on the surface. And we are gonna do the same exact thing with the exterior. So we're gonna go ahead and roll it down so it gets to our one inch mark. And what is helpful to do is tape it at the bottom. So like fold it here and tape just the underneath layer to hold it down so that when you go to do the pleat, that doesn't come up on you. So just kinda eyeball it here. You can put crease mark if you want and then tape this section down. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and roll our exterior to the edge of our hoop or to our one inch mark and gently fold it. Remember, we don't wanna to put too much of a crease mark in this. But it needs to be even across. Okay, and then you're gonna fold up that one inch mark so it's just above that placement line from step one. I'm gonna put a piece of tape right here in the center since I have that ready to go. So you now have a one inch pleat at the bottom of the bag. And this would be actually much better with the one inch wide um, tape but I'm out of that, I need to order more. Because you want to have this area stitch taped down really well. Because when your needle comes through, it's gonna try and bump up on that area. But I'll show you what we're gonna do to try and avoid that from happening. So the bottom part of this you can press really well, just not that middle. So remember, you want the line, the bottom, to be right above that bottom line from the original placement stitch. I'm using a lot of tape so that that does not come up on us. And you haven't moved your zipper pull yet, leave your zipper pull where it's at. So what you're gonna need is a couple of scraps of tear away. Because what's gonna happen is your presser foot's gonna try and come here 
and this is really thick, especially if you're using vinyl, and we don't want the presser foot to get stuck. See, so it'll bump into it. So by using some scrap tear away, it'll prevent the presser foot from getting stuck there. So now go ahead and, ah, my stabilizer came in done. Go ahead and, um, oh, remove your tape from your D-ring strap connectors. Don't forget to do that. Else it'll get caught in your seam. Oh, good thing this happened. Look what happened. And all this moving around, my D-ring strap connector flipped up. That could be a really bad situation when you're stitching. The needle would hit it. So make sure that that's down and you can actually tape it down to hold it in place so it doesn't come loose again. Okay, so we're gonna take the top and it's way too long so you can trim it now if you want and I'm just gonna fold it so it's even here. And trim that real quick. Because I need something to tape against. Okay. Let's go ahead and tape your top down and the sides. And make sure you put a piece in the middle because sometimes what happens is the vibrations when it's coming across the zipper will pull on this and it might pull down. Okay, so we don't need this uh, extra yet because we're going to do the top seam. My thread came undone. We don't need the extra tear away is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so we're going to run step eight. And I'll be right back. Okay. Of course, I meant step nine. We skipped step eight. So what we've done now is we've partially stitched the top of our bag and our lining. So if we go to the back, everything should be neat. Let me check that real quick. It is. And what we're going to do now is move our zipper pull. Because we haven't done it yet. So go ahead and pull this end up and release the zipper if you have tape on it. And then go ahead and push it as far over as you can underneath. And you might have to use your zip seam ripper. So if you get your seam ripper on the, the little hook of your zipper and slide it underneath, you can get it past. You need to get it past where we just ended. So just use your seam ripper or your hands if you can get your hand in there and just push it all the way past like that. So it's right here now, it's gonna be out of our way. Let's go ahead and retape this down just to make sure it's nice and tight. And then we're gonna run step 10 and I'll be right back. Okay, so we're all done with that. We have our top all zip stitched in place. The next piece we're gonna need our tear away. So what you're gonna do is float your tear away underneath, or on top, I should say, of your bag, and then tape it down on both sides so that it has some tautness to it. You don't really need it at the very top, but I find if you just try to add it at the bottom, it's, there's a likelihood that it will get hung up up there. So we're gonna stitch step 11, which is gonna stitch this side down, I'm gonna show you on this one so when it reaches here so you can see how this table stabilizer, excuse me, acts as a bridge. Then it's gonna move over to about halfway and run a couple of stitches before it goes to color stop 12. And again, that is digitized that way so that you have time to move over to that side of the hoop and put the tear away and make any adjustments that you might need. So I'm gonna show you step 11. If for some reason you feel like you need to 
give some support, do not use your fingers. Use your stiletto or a rubber spatula or something to help coax this down if you need to. When you put your finger under there, the only thing you're gonna be sure of is an emergency bill. Now it's gonna come down here and then come back up and do another stitch just outside the line. And the reason I do that is for vinyl. If you're using vinyl, it tends to show the stitches in the seam allowance by adding another set of stitches just to the outside will reduce the look of that steep stitches. And you can see with the cotton, it went over it really easily. I probably could have got away with just tape to hold that down, but with vinyl, it's so much thicker. One thing I really want to stress, if you're using vinyl, you do not want to use an unwieldy vinyl. And what I mean by that, now I'm going to make sure that this doesn't hit there, so I'm going to raise it up. Because with my machine, remember, the presser foot goes here and there and everywhere. What I mean by the unwieldy vinyl is, of course, I probably don't have any scraps handy to show you. Any vinyl that, um, if it won't take a crease, if it will not take a crease, then that vinyl is going to, oh, actually I have the vinyl right here that I used for the sample bag. It's a little bit too thick, first of all. And secondly, it will not, so if I fold like this, well, this is making a lie out of me, but it won't stay. It will not stay there. It's this material on the back, the flannel, is kind of thick, and so it it's very unwieldy. So when you try to fold it over and you have uh, four layers like that, it's really thick and it's unwieldy. Even using a 90-14 needle, it struggled. Um, probably could have done a, a 100 needle and it would have been fine, but yeah. You don't want to use an unwieldy uh, vinyl. So now we're going to come over here and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to put our scrap tear away here and tape it down on both sides. Oh, I can use this tape now that I don't have it. Just to hold it in place and give it some tautness. I found when I did not do this, then it tried to move around on me, which isn't any good. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and let it run the thrust of step 11. Might as well finish this out as long as we're here. Okay, so I'll let it run step 11. And then it's going to do the same thing. It's going to go to the top and stitch down. And if you need to coax it, use your stiletto. And then it's going to go back up to the top. over a sixteenth of an inch and it's going to do the second pass. I just want you to see how thick that seam is. Oh, that should have backstitched back into that. I'll fix that. It should have ended up finishing over here. Okay, step 13 is a skip. That's just to prevent the hoop from coming back to the center. If it comes back to the center, it could get stuck on any of the hardware. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my hoop out of the way. With my machine, I can do that. I should say my hoop attachment. So I can get in here and show you. Oops, some tape fell off. Before you on hoop, always check the back of the hoop and make sure that your lining stitched out fine and didn't get un, um, stuck anywhere and pleated, any of that kind of stuff. Now remove all the extra tape from the lining side. It's just much easier to do that now. And you see our pleat stayed nice and neat. Okay. And let's go to the top. I love this new hoop. The way the hoop it has these little brackets, you get it tight. 
and then it undoes it. Oh, so cool. So cool. Love it. All right. All hoops should be like this Janome hoop. And it doesn't exist on the 500, only on the 550. Okay, so let me get all the tape removed. When you're removing the tear away, the one I'm using is actually really thick. Um, I don't have any of the thinner, the kind I use for snap tabs. So I don't make snap tabs anymore. I think I ran out of it and I just haven't bought it. I hardly ever make snap tabs, I should say. If I do make them, I just use the poly mesh. All right, get all the tape off. So when you're removing this, tear into it, hold against your seam, your stitches. Ah, I say that and it's not working for me. It did fine the other day. But if you hold against your stitches, it tears off usually much easier. <laughs> It's making a liar out of me. But again, I'm using a much thicker tearaway. And um, it's not, I'm just actually going to trim it. It's not really, um, I might have grabbed the cutaway. No, I know it's a tearaway. Okay, try it down here again. I don't know, maybe I did grab cutaway. It's very thick. But trust me, you want to use tearaway. Because you don't want the stabilizer to be stuck in the seams. Okay. Let's try this side and see if... I think I did grab cut away. Oh my goodness gracious, Kimberly. I always put the little papers inside the roll, but to be honest, it's not very convenient for figuring out which it is when it, they look very similar. I need to figure out a better way because I get the really big rolls, so those little um, snap bracelets don't fit around them. If you didn't know that, you can get those little slap bracelets that the kids play with. Well, I mean, we had them on a Gen X or we had them when I was a kid. And use those to wrap around your stabilizer, the smaller rows of stabilizer. Okay. So I'm just going to try and get as close to the seam as I can without cutting it. But yeah, you just tear this away. Okay, so now for trimming this package. I'm not gonna take the time to save my poly mesh now. I usually will go through and save the extra poly mesh. But what I wanna stress to you is this top of the zipper is not the top of the seam. So you don't wanna risk cutting into that zipper when you're trimming out your um bag so turn it when you're trimming the top extra top seam off turn it so you can see the zipper fold the lining out of the way if you have to and then trim it in two passes do not trim your d-ring strap connector because remember we purposely left that longer so just go ahead and trim you know like an eighth of an inch above the zipper so you don't cut into your zipper tape because that would be a very bad thing. Okay. And I'm not going to worry about the lining, but if your lining is really long, do the same thing. Trim it so that it's um, you're not cutting off your zipper tape. Let me trim out. I do like to save these scraps of poly mesh. Um, they come in very good handy for 
um, doing uh, support of extra satin stitching when you're doing bags with a lot of satin stitching on it. So, almost done guys. The hardest thing to show in the pictures is how to open the bottom. So what you wanna do is think about those sandwich bags, the pleated sandwich bags that you buy to wrap your lunch or your kid's lunch or whatever. And that's exactly what we just did here. We just created one of those bags. So if you think about how you fill those out and how they open up at the bottom, you'll see this. Now we're gonna go ahead and trim around and leave a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. Remember not to trim off your D-ring strap connector more than, you know, it's extending out, leave it extended out. And you shouldn't really need to trim your lining because you should have had it lined up at right at that half inch mark anyway, on the bottom. So you can go ahead and trim off the lining and exterior corners, but don't cut into your zipper tape. If you do trim off your zipper tape like that, then fold this back and use a lighter and burn zipper tape so that it doesn't come unraveled. So if you do do that, whether on intentional or on accident, just go ahead and singe the edges so it doesn't come undone. Okay. Preferably do this somewhere away from your machine. All right, and I mentioned at the beginning that you could use tearaway because you'll see here, you can actually access that stabilizer. You could tear it away carefully. See how it's loose in here? And pull it out but I just leave mine in there I don't worry about it so now we're going to turn the bag right side out so we're going to go ahead and reach in here and this is a since it's a big bag it's a nice generous opening let me see if I can zoom and I usually just go for one corner and work that out and then gradually keep stuffing in the exterior and usually the other side will kind of come along on its own. But on the, this is really easy because it's a big bag. But on the smaller bags, it's, you have to take a lot more time. So I like to use um, my Fabri-Tac um, glue to close my bags. So I need a whole bunch of these little wonder clips, magic clips, whatever you call them. This is a long scene. I'm not a sponsored by them, but I'm just a happy customer. So I like to make sure you find your fold of your seam where it was on your folded up on your hoop. And I'm finger pressing that just to give it more definition. And then the same thing on the other side. And then I just roll a line of glue across that fold and clip in place. Oh, let me make sure before I do that, I like to try and pull everything out first, push out all the corners before I close it. Just, I find it's easier that, that way. Okay, there we go. Now I'm gonna roll in my glue. I'm gonna start in the center and work to that side. And then take your other folded edge and lay it into the glue. And put a clip. and then line up the rest. And 
make sure you do not leave this sitting around without the lid on it for very long because the once it's been used a, a little bit this isn't even i gotta fix this a little bit once it's been used a little bit it gets gases in it and the glue will actually start to seep up through the center of the hose or the top of it i got this off a little i gotta fix it um and if that gets on your wood surfaces it'll damage it ask me how i know have a big circle on my wonderful dining table that i've had for like 14 years or something like that no it's 2004 how many years is that 19 years okay so i like to clip it and usually by the time you're done with one end the drop glue has set up the reason why i like this glue so much is because it actually has a setup time that's really fast like less than a minute it takes 24 hours to fully cure but you can turn the bag right side out after about a minute so while that's sitting go ahead and reach in and open your zipper the rest of the way so just go in most zippers it's easy but some zipper poles are a little bit harder to do okay and now, just like that, we should be able to unglue this, unclip it, I mean, and turn the bag to the right side. Okay, so now turn your bag to the exterior side. And you see how you're, it's already forming that little pleat, that little gusset on the inside. Go ahead and push all the corners out. And if you have a favorite turning device, go ahead and use that. And so right here, see how the corner is coming? Reach inside and feel for that tip of that corner. And you can feel it through the lining. There's a little bit of a hard corner there at the exterior. And just work it out, see? Okay. Now go ahead and push your, what I like to do is put the this part in that little corner and I miss taking some tape out, oops. So in this corner here where the the beginning of the zipper is the closed end of it. Go ahead and put that in, hold your thumb on top and then push out like that. So put the, your turning device in here, hold your thumb on top and then your zipper will push out. On this side, if we don't do anything, we go to zip the bag across. Why is my zipper sticking? Uh, I didn't get my what's going on here I don't know what's going on it's because I don't have a way to top stitch through the lining on the back so my lining is trying to come up on me so just kind of push down the lining so it's not in your zipper pull. Mine got caught in my zipper pull. Okay, I might need to adjust that last step there. It should not be getting stuck there. Okay, sorry guys. 
some reason mine's sticking on the lining. What you can do as well to keep the lining is before you turn it is run some double stick tape on the inside of it and tape it down. There we go. But I think I need to look at that seam. There we go. Oh. Okay, so what I was trying to say <laughs> after all that is, see how it's kind of puckered there? So the way you get that out, okay, is to push down with your turning device and push that seam down and pull up on the zipper tape in the back at the same time. And what you're doing is pushing that extra material into the seam of that zipper there. And then your zipper will pull all the way over like that. Okay, so the bottom. This is where I said do not crease that section right there because it'll leave a mark here. So just like your little bags, your grocery bags, or I'm sorry, your sandwich bags, make sure that the corner is pushed all the way out. Feel inside and it's pushed all the way out and you can feel it, it is. Once you're sure that both sides, the corner is pushed all the way out, then go ahead and just go like this. One thumb on either side and go like that, pull. And then push this down and then you can go ahead and seam finger press or roller or whatever with your vinyl that edge there on both sides with my vinyl what I actually had to do was weight it down okay but with cotton you can finger press it and then when you go to set your bag up you have a nice little gusset there but if you press that center too much, you'll see that fold line here. And you don't want to see the fold line there. And there you go. So this is probably going to be a really nice size makeup bag or something like that. And then in the inside, you can just go ahead and reach in and push out the bottom with your hands. I, I don't worry too much about making sure the bottom inside looks as pretty but you have the gusset in there as well. But see how open it is? It's not a flat bag. And then you have your D-ring strap connectors and your bag stands up. Just like that, well, I'll show you here. But this is a really big bag. But this would probably be really good for a small Kindle. Um, and then if you want, you can just kind of work your fingers in here against here and give it a little bit of a pleat. This should be about one inch across just to give that a little bit. So like fold it inwards like this. And then that and pre crease. And do that on both sides so put your hand inside if you have to and what you're doing is you're folding this like so so you're creating a, a crease mark there and then the other side should be about the same width so about one inch And then fold it like that and crease it. That just helps keep the bag a little bit more flat on the bottom. Can you see that? Didn't tell you in the video, but if you want, you can actually make that pleat long, taller than one inch. What you have to take into consideration is when you make it deeper, the gusset, the bottom will pull in more and the top will be out. So you'll have a trapezoid shaped bag, not a flat one. But you can do that. You can put in 
with this size bag, you could do like a one and a half inch pleat on the bottom and fold it up. Um, just be mindful of where that little carry stitch is. But this is it. So I hope you guys like this bag. Um, I hope to have it. Today is Sunday. I think it's either the 8th. I think, yeah, it's the 8th, right? January 8th. Uh, it should be released by next weekend. Um, I needed to do the video so that my testers can um, test it. Um, since that last couple steps is a little confusing with opening the bag and how to turn it. So, thanks so much everybody and have a great day. I'll be sure to like the video and subscribe so you'll be aware of all my new patterns. Thank you.